all of the pieces that make up peace um, were being addressed in different ways. And yet there were things that were falling between the cracks uh, in the security studies work that I trained to do. And I continue to be and identify as a security studies scholar as well. Um, you know, nobody's talking about people's lives, but that is the ultimate unit of security. You know, if a person is not safe in their life, then what is all my grand doctrine about? Something happens at 10 o'clock and by 10, 15, you have experts writing on it. How is it possible to have, to grasp what is going on in the world and have an instant opinion. So to remind whatever it is that the space was going to be, I wanted a name that would be a reminder to do long haul work, to do deep work, to do quiet work, to do slow work, you know, to not be tempted into um, quickly coming up with something, you know, catching the, uh, the, the, the closest storm or, for that matter, whatever is the new funding trend. The heart of Pragnya's work, and I say this, and I've said this in 15 years, even at times when the Peace Education Initiative has been um, dormant to comatose, actually the Peace Education work. This is who we are. This is our heart. And the gender work is important. It's pivotal because gender equality, equality and justice are central to peace. You cannot have a peaceful society that is hierarchical, unequal, full of discrimination, all of which create impunity for violence. It's just not possible. We're looking at an age that valorizes a certain degree of aggression as, as uh, agency. We take naturally gentle children and we discuss them and say, he must learn or she must learn to be more aggressive. Why? Why can't we have a few yeah. lotuses and roses and asters in our midst? Why must everyone be, you know, a, a thorn with an agenda? I often say when I'm teaching college students, walking into uh, schools, we used to begin with this session, What is Peace? Which was supposed to be like this big dramatic show. We say, peace is this and peace is that. And, and we would say, what is peace? And the kids would come back with, peace is a sense of calm. And at that point, I, each time I narrate this, I also think, okay, how, how fraudulent is my claim to be a peace educator when a 10-year-old gets it immediately? Peace is who you are inside. One of the things I want to keep telling people, reminding them is that they have agency mm -hmm. and that they have a right to act. They are citizens, you know? This is a very big thing. And um, I cannot stress enough yeah. that citizenship is a right and an entitlement yeah. that you exercise. Yeah. So it, you, you don't need anybody's permission to become aware, to be better informed, to ask questions. Mm. and to actively deal with any sense of helplessness that you're feeling. Because that is the main... Yes, but the moment you start doing these three, the helplessness yeah. diminishes. Because then the next step is how do you talk about these things? Yeah. And I think the first step to talking about anything is to listen to other people. Mm -hmm. So to learn to listen to the opinions you think are obnoxious. Mm -hmm. Without... I mean, just... Let people speak. You want to have your say, let them have their say. Hmm. Then ask them, engage with them. You can engage Socratically, you can ask questions. If you keep asking questions with a genuine spirit of inquiry, they will come 
they will find their own contradictions. They will find their own ways to qualify what they think are absolute truths. I'm fairly sure of that. Uh, that's my conviction that allows me to engage with this exercise 